sharing it to share my screen. Confirm also that you can be able to see my screen. Yes, I can see your screen. Thank you so much. So I'm taking us through improved mining operations. And I think clearly who has really uh, shown how GIS is being used in the geological survey of Ethiopia, which is a mining uh, agency. And the part of what is covered, I'm going to touch on during my presentation, but at least he's given us from a very practical point of view what they are doing. So my name is Evelyn Lele. I'm the solutions engineer for the government sector team. So I mainly support the sector to document and formulate appropriate solutions. And I also promote GIS technology as a speaker in seminars, workshops, and uh, conferences just like, uh, like this one. So I'm going to take us through uh, improved mining operations with uh, ArcGIS. And specifically, when we talk about ArcGIS for mining, I think Eric also mentioned a lot of this when he was taking us through his presentation. Mining is a really specialized uh, industry with uh, so many systems, including if you think of evaluating geological resources, managing operations, overseeing labor processes. So what ArcGIS does is that it uses location to bind data from this uh, system together to create one holistic view of operations across the mining sector and that's basically what we are going to look at today during this particular particular session so just to lay a foundation in terms of uh, how ArcGIS enables uh, is an enabling platform across the various uh, mining workflows. Of course, within the mining sector, we have various uh, workflows. And I think Lelihu has really tried covering the various workflows that they have. So right from think of the first bit where you're doing mineral exploration, where you actually uh, you know, acquiring information and analyzing information to be able to determine the mineral sites. So you can actually be able to use the very powerful tools that we have within the ArcGIS platform to be able to do a mineral exploration, whether you're looking at uh, maybe the structure points such as the dikes and the faults for you to be able to determine where certain minerals are actually appearing. So ArcGIS is actually a very important platform when it comes to this particular uh, uh, workflow of exploration. Then, of course, we now have the actual mining work where uh, the drilling is actually being done in the mines. So what this platform also does is that it provides uh, um, it provides a platform for collaboration and monitoring of the various workflows in the mining sector. We're going to look at this, as well as asset management, being able to, uh, to actually monitor the, uh, the status of the various assets, assets that you're using in the mining operation. Then again, we have, of course, environmental management. So being able to uh, do environmental analysis and determine risk analysis in the particular uh, uh, segment that you're in. And lastly, also, uh, there's an aspect of community engagement, being able to get feedback back being able to engage the community and uh, other people where you actually doing your operation so that ideally ArcGIS captures the entire the entire workflow so what we are talking about today is ArcGIS I'm sure for some of us I'm sure most of us have heard about this so for those who are hearing this for the first time ArcGIS is a complete uh, GIS uh, platform and it's a system for managing and applying uh, geographic information and this particular platform has various components Leliu has actually taken us through a lot of the uh, components of this platform right from enterprise right from the portal and all the components is taken us through so this particular uh, platform has various components at the center here we have the portal which is the central uh, repository then you can be able to make use of the various applications we have desktop applications such as ArcGIS Pro. We have applications that you can use on various uh, devices. And this platform also gives you the opportunity to be able to extend and even customize the applications that we have over here. Then in terms of deployment, there are, de there are various options of deploying this particular uh, platform. You can go on premise where we, you have the the system or the platform within your infrastructure. You can also have this within your chosen uh, private cloud, or you can choose to actually go uh, the software as a service way, which is the cloud-based way. Or the other option is actually do a hybrid of both uh, uh, on-premise deployment and uh, cloud uh, deployments. So there are various, uh, it's actually very uh, flexible and highly scalable. So regardless of uh, whatever point you're in as an organization, you can be able to start and scale it up. So this particular platform um, is an integrated platform that we are calling a system of system. So it's an integrated platform even for the mining segment. So we have 
uh, different systems here. And the first one is what we are calling the system of record. So with the system of record, what this means is that this, this uh, platform, the ArcGIS platform gives you the opportunity to actually have store your, all your data sets as an organization in a central database where you can easily access, update, and even share. So that's why we are calling it a system of record. So as a mining organization, you could be having data maybe on mineral occurrences, or you even have data and maps on geological um, areas. So this particular system provides a database where you can have all these data sets. Then we're also talking about the system being a system of insight. So what this means is that you're able to derive patterns, you're able to derive trends, you're able to understand relationships between your data, and uh, at the same time being able to derive insights for effective uh, and informed decision making. Then we're also talking about this system as a system of engagement, being able to collaborate and communicate across different departments within your organization. So ideally, what we are seeing here is that this particular system is able to connect people, it's able to connect processes, it's able to connect things and data about them. And that's the platform that we are talking about today. So uh, within this particular platform, we have different applications. And the first application that we have is uh, ArcGIS Pro. And specifically for the workflows that I've already mentioned, the mineral exploration uh, bit where you need to do analysis and determine the occurrence of the various minerals in the different uh, in the different uh, areas. So with ArcGIS Pro, we have what we are calling geology uh, in indices. So these indices are mainly image indices that are computed from multi-band uh, images. And these images specify specific uh, phenomena that is uh, present. So depending on the band that you're looking at, di different bands are able to emphasize different phenomena. So with the geology indices in ArcGIS Pro, you can actually be able to use the various image bands to be able to uh, analyze and see uh, the availability or the possibility of, uh, of occurrence of certain minerals within, uh, within a specific area. So uh, the other thing that I need to mention here is that you need to be sure about the image sensor that you're using just to ensure that it supports the specific bands that you're looking at. So for the geology indices, we, we have a number of uh, indices that you can be able to use just to touch on some of them. So the first one is the iron oxide uh, indice or ratio. So with this particular one, you're mainly going to use the red and blue uh, red and blue bands to be able to, to, be able to determine uh, the likelihood of occurrence of iron oxide. Then we also have the ferrous uh, mineral uh, index. So this one, you're going to use mainly the shorter uh, infrared and the near infrared uh, bands. So for this case, if it's a Landsat image, you're talking about band five and band seven. And then for clay minerals uh, uh, index, you're mainly looking at a uh, short wave uh, infrared infrared band, that's short wave infrared one and short wave uh, infrared two. So for this particular one, again, if you're talking about uh, Landsat again, just as an example as, that I'm going to use in the in the demo. So you need to be very specific or very sure about the band combination that that particular sensor type that you're using is able to give you. So that's on the mineral exploration bit. Then the other bit that I also mentioned is the mining uh, operations. So uh, this particular platform that we are calling the ArcGIS platform is able to enable you monitor the progress of work and operations within your, your mining site. So right from the planning bit where you're actually determining where you, 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 you're actually determining where the minerals are, where you're determining the work to be done. If it's in a mining site, you can be able to do all these and coordinate your workforce within ArcGIS. Navigating and routing to the particular site where this particular activity is going to take place, being able to understand what's happening, being able to capture information and even send feedback. And the people in the office can actually be able to track and monitor what's happening in the field, being able to coordinate your your workforce or your mining crew or the other teams that you have as an organization. So this platform is also able to give you uh, the capabilities that you can be able to use to monitor the various mining operations. 
Then the other bit that I also mentioned is environmental management and public safety. So with the platform, you're able to use maps and spatial analysis to understand risk, risk areas and be able to put in place a proper uh, risk management uh, strategies as well as environmental uh, issues. Then lastly, the other workflow that I, I had mentioned is community engagement. So the platform also enables you to build understanding and local support and engage your community. So we have various applications within the platform that you can be able to use to engage the various uh, people within uh, a particular community within an area or even your customers or your clients so again this is not a limited platform there's really so much that you can be able to do uh, with this particular platform so that basically captures the workflows within the mining segment so what i'm going to take us through next is a uh, is a brief demonstration just to show some of the capabilities that i have already uh, already mentioned so just allow me to reshare my screen again so I'm just going to share my screen again. Um, Eric, please confirm if you can see my ArcGIS Pro screen. Yes, I can see your screen. All right, thank you. So the next bit that I'm now going to take us through is the demonstration of some of the capabilities that I have already mentioned that you can be able to utilize within this particular platform. So what you're seeing is ArcGIS Pro. ArcGIS Pro is one of the main uh, desktop applications that we have within, within the platform. And uh, it has very many capabilities that you can be able to utilize and use as a mining organization. So I mentioned that um, within this particular uh, application, can do so much and one of the things that we are going to look at is how you, you're able to actually do analysis to determine uh, mineral occurrence in different areas and even before I go into into that so the images that you you, you can use within ArcGIS Pro you can download images from uh, various sites and actually pre-process and do the band combination and run your analysis so that's one option you can actually get, download the images, pre-process and do the analysis here. Then the other option is that you can actually be able to use available uh, web map services. So for instance, here I'm already connected to Digital Earth Africa. So here you can be able to use the already pre-processed and ready images within, uh, within the Digital Earth Africa. So I'm just going to show us how you can be able to add uh, that particular one. So for this one, we're interested in satellite uh, imagery and uh, specifically surface reflectance, then we can pick the annual uh, surface reflectance. So these are already pre-processed images that you just uh, access them as web map services and you can be able to add them to your project and work with them. So that's one option, being able to use web map services. So you'll simply add this to your to your ArcGIS Pro, then you can be able to clip it. This gives us information about uh, the entire Africa. So you can be able to clip it to your area of, of interest and run uh, your analysis within ArcGIS Pro. Then the other option, apart from using the web map services that are already there, is being able to download your images and then pre-process and use them. So I'm also going to show us, I have, um, just for the purposes of this presentation, I have a Landsat uh, image for some place in Kenya that I have downloaded. And I just want to show you how you can be able to also bring these here. So this is Landsat 8 with um, a total of 11 bands. So I'll just add this to our ArcGIS Pro. So this is the other option. If you have images of your area of interest that you want to use, you can also be able to bring them uh, to ArcGIS Pro. So I have uh, Landsat, imagery, uh, Landsat 8 image for this section of Kenya, and uh, it has all the bands, band one to band uh, 11. So what you need to do is uh, be able to uh, combine, I, I, when I, I was talking about the geological indices, you have to actually know which band combinations you need for your analysis. So first we'll, we'll, do, a com we'll, we'll do what we are calling a band combination using the composite band uh, tool. So when you come to tools, you're able to search for composite bands. Yeah, so we're going to create a single raster data sets with the multiple bands that we have. 
So this again will give us all the bands, band one to band uh, 11, then you can input all, all, the, all the bands here from band one to band uh, 11. So for the interest of time, I'm also not going to do that. So I had already done that. So I'm just going to open another project that has that. So I have um, an image that has the composite, uh, the composite image with uh, the Landsat bands, that's band one to band 11. So this is a sample of what we have. And if we look at, if you go to the properties, let me just go to the image properties. Yeah, so you can actually be able to see that this particular image has all the bands, band one to band 11. So the next thing that I mentioned that you can be able to do is now work with what we are calling the uh, geology indices to be able to determine uh, the probability or the uh, likelihood of occurrence of different minerals in different uh, areas. So I'll, I'll come to the imagery tab under the ribbon and we have this section here on indices. So we have different types of indices. Apart from the geology indices, we have other indices that you can use for other purposes, for instance, vegetation and soils, water. But for the purpose of this session, I'm just interested in showing us how you can be able to run the indices that we have under the geology, uh, the geology segment. So we can start with the first index on clay minerals. So for the clay minerals, mainly you're looking at um, uh, the short wave infrared and the, the short wave infrared one and the short wave infrared two. So if you click on clay minerals, this is actually what you get. So the band combination that you should actually have here is short wave infrared one band and short wave infrared two band. So for our case, since we're using a Landsat image, the short wave infrared one will be band five. So we can pick band five and then the short wave infrared two will be band seven. So we can pick band seven, then you click okay. So once you click okay, this tool is actually able to run and you're able to see the places that have a likelihood occurrence of clay minerals. So again, in the interest of time, I'm not going to run that. So I'm just going to show you what I had already run. So here I have um, what you get when you run uh, that particular index on clay minerals. Just give it a second. So again, it's really important to know for each of the index, it's really important to know which band combination to use because specific bands are able to emphasize specific uh, phenomena and they have different uh, they have different degrees of reflectance to different to different materials. So um, let me just click that. I think it's taking a while but even as it does that as it loads we can i can show you how to do the next uh, index so the next index is iron oxide so the same way we did uh, the same way we did um, the clay the clay one is the same way we'll do the the iron oxide so for iron oxide i had already run this so for this particular one again the band the the band combination for iron oxide is band 1 and band uh, 3 that's for the case of for our case where we're using Landsat, which is the red and the blue band. So after running that particular index, you can actually be able to see just a sample of what you have in a map. The, 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 the dense brown areas are areas that you're likely to have occurrence of iron oxide. So this is actually a very uh, fast way of being able to, you know, just run the indices and actually be able to determine where you're likely to have uh, occurrence of different uh, minerals. Again, this is just for the purposes of this demonstration. Oh yeah, so the clay one is uh, uh, finally here. So again, you can be able to see that the deep uh, areas, I've just symbolized them to show that the deep areas are areas where you're likely to have an occurrence of that particular uh, mineral. So that's how you're able to, to do this. So you can also do that for um, for the ferrous minerals. So again, on the imagery tab, you just go to indices, then you can go to ferrous minerals. So for ferrous minerals, mainly this is, uh, it uses short wave infrared band and the near infrared band. So for our case, since we're using a Landsat image, the short wave infrared band will be band five. So you can pick band five here. And then the near infrared uh, uh, band will be band four. Then you're able to run that and you're able to get your, you're able to get your, your analysis. So again, you can be able to use more multiple uh, indices apart from what I have uh, I have shown here. There are very many other indices that you can be able to use to show the occurrence of minerals. Again, you can be able to see based on the symbology that I have the likelihood of occurrence of different uh, minerals depending on the, on the band combination. So again, this is just for the purposes of this demonstration, but I'm sure you can refine the, you can refine the process. You can use more other indices just to refine the output in the process of um, 
just trying to understand where the different minerals are likely to occur. Then the other thing that I want to take us through now is how you can be able to use uh, this particular uh, system or platform as a system of record. And for this particular one, you could actually be having data sets as an organization. Maybe you have um, data sets on mineral occurrences in different, um, in different uh, areas. So you can be able to uh, make use of the platform to search for various uh, data sets. So I'll just go to the portal, then I can search for, I think for the purposes of this demo also, I have data on minerals, just again, dummy data, minerals, Kenya. Let me just search for that. Um, let me just add this. Okay, so you can actually be able to add data to your map. So you can add different uh, data sets that you have as an organization that you'd want to use. So this shows us uh, different, uh, let me turn off this. So this shows how you can be able to use this platform also as a system of record, just being able to access and update the various uh, data sets that you have as an organization. So again, you can be able to see the occurrence of different uh, minerals in Kenya. And maybe just to make sense out of this, what we can do is we can symbolize this particular data. Maybe we can symbolize depending on the, on the mineral type. So under symbology, we can use uh, unique values. Then we can symbolize based on the uh, on the mineral type. Then we can choose a color scheme to use. Yeah, you can already see that is symbolized. So we have different uh, types of minerals occurring in different area. So what you can do with this system is that you can actually be able to use it as a system of record just to get information about uh, the various uh, the occurrence of various uh, minerals or even any other data set that you have. And if you look at the attribute table, you can also be able to capture as much information about uh, your data sets as, as possible. So you can have as many attributes, if it's the mineral, uh, the element, if it's the, the mineral type, if it's the exact location, if it's the label ETC. So you can actually have as many as many attributes about your data set as possible. So having looked at that, I now want us to look at how you can also be able to use this particular uh, platform as a system of um, engagement for mining operations. So um, what you have, let me just, Sorry for that. So what you have here is a simple a survey that the people in the field can be able to use. So I have like a mining volume report. So with this particular one, if you have crew that are working in the field doing various uh, operations within the mining segment, you can actually be able to have them uh, give information depending on what's happening. So you can have the name of the crew here, maybe let's call him Lelihu. Then the crew ID, CID 145, then it automatically picks the date and time when that particular operation is being done. And then maybe for this particular one, you just want to know in terms of the mining uh, operation, what are the number of stockpiles that they have managed to capture maybe within a day or depending on how you do your reporting. So maybe, maybe you have a total of three stockpiles and then the volume of the of the stockpile and then you can also take a picture of the stockpile then of course there are various methods of measuring the volume of your stockpile so you, i have just captured some of what you could be using maybe you could be using laser scanning total station drone survey or any other so maybe for this one we're using drone surveying then the excavator id so i've also captured an aspect of just being able to to understand the status of the assets that you're using in the field so maybe this is seven eight and then you can be able to capture details of the health status of that particular excavator maybe it's operational or is due for service or it's down so again this helps you for each of these uh, equipment or assets that you use in the field they have a lifespan and they often they need to be often they need to be able to to actually um, be serviced so you can be able to capture that information you can also be able to capture information about the excavator model 
whether it's a Volvo or any of this. And then the crews can also be able to give uh, any other comment. And the beauty with this application is that you're able to capture the exact location where that particular activity is taking place. So you can see it's actually capturing my, my location. And again, uh, the accuracy is increased if you're actually outside, like now I'm in a building. So it's able to capture the exact location where that particular operation is taking place, then you're able to submit your report. So when you submit your report, the people in the office can now be able to monitor and see the progress of work that is happening in the field. So I just have a simple, um, dashboard that is able to display the information of what's happening in the field so you can actually be able to see the details let me just reload this so that we can be able to see if we have the latest record that we have just captured so with this you're able to monitor the progress of work that is happening in the field i had uh, i think 10 records before so let's see if they are new 11 yeah so we actually have new records and the, the yes the one that was just submitted was submitted by Lelihu so you can actually be able to see the details here in almost uh, in real time actually you can be able to see the details submitted by the crew you can be able to see the location where the different activities are taking place right on the map here and then you can be able to see the total volume in terms of the work that has been done for instance you can be able to see the total stockpile that has been that has been uh, excavated or mined in a particular area you can be able to see the uh, the most common mode of measurement that has been used for this particular one. It's laser scanning. You can be able to see the health status of the assets, for, for instance, the excavator. And you can be able to see the trend in terms of the volume over time. So for instance, maybe you just want to see what has been our progress in the last one month or the last one week. So you can actually be able to see the trend in terms of the progress of work that's happening in the field. And the beauty with this also is that you can also be able to query. Maybe you just want to see what a specific crew in the field has done so you can query by the crew id and you're able to see the specific information and the work that has been done by that particular crew so this is actually a very easy way of being able to monitor the progress of uh, work and activities taking place in the field so what i've basically taken you through is some of the capabilities that you can be able to make use of that you, or that you can be able to leverage within the ArcGIS platform to be able to improve the workflows within the mining sector so i I think I may want to stop there. Thanks for your time. I think I'm now going to hand it over back to Eric. Over to you, Eric.